Welcome to the presentation on Critical Angle and TIR, which stands for Total Internal Reflection. When light or any wave travels from one medium to another, at the boundary between the two mediums, if the speed in each of those mediums is different, you will get refraction happening. Um, if you're going from a slow medium to a fast medium, the refraction will be away from the normal line. And as you increase the angle of incidence, you increase the amount of refraction until you hit a special point where the angle of refraction is 90 degrees. We call this the critical angle. If you increase the angle any more than this, you get what's called total internal reflection. So all the light that hits the boundary gets reflected back and it follows the law of reflection like you would expect, where angle of incidence equals angle of reflection. If you go back though, before this point, you do actually get some reflection. You get a partial reflection. So you still get some reflection. So if you're doing this experiment yourself, don't be surprised if you see something. So what I've just drawn on here are some small partial reflections. Okay, so now let's have a look at some of the uses of total internal reflection. So, taking a thin strand of glass, or a glass fibre, you can use it as a tunnel for light. And that's useful for things like sending information uh, down optical fibres, for instance with broadband, or even for sending light uh, into a patient's body and getting light out of a patient's body in an, uh, in an endoscope. Okay, so now let's look at some example calculations. So if we have to find the critical angle, um, or find I when, the, refraction, uh, when the, the angle of refraction is 90 degrees, um, we can just use Snell's law. So write out Snell's law, substitute the numbers you know into it. Uh, here we have um, the velocities, we have the angle of refraction, it's going to be 90 degrees, and we're just looking for I. Okay, so as I simplify the equation, I'm just cross-multiplying to get it all on one line then dividing both sides by 3 to get rid of the 3 on the right hand side of the equation. Now calculating 2 sine times 90 divided by 3 gives me 0.66. Now on the calculator I'm going to take the inverse of 0.66 or sine to inverse of 0.66 to get I on its own. And so calculating that gives me 41.8 degrees which I can round up to 42 degrees. By the way 42 degrees is nearly always the critical angle in the exam questions for some reason. They always use the same type of glass. Another exam hint or tip is that you'll often be given the critical angle going from air to glass, not from glass to air, and you'll need to find the inverse. So, taking the inverse and subbing the numbers into Snell's law, 1 over sine 1.5 for instance would be equal to sine i over sine 90. Sine 90 is equal to 1 and then you can just invert both sides of the equation to simplify it down again. 1.5 divided by 1 is just going to be 1.5 and you've got 1.5 is equal to 1 over sine r. So you can generally say that mu or refractive index is equal to 1 over sine c and it's c for critical angle. Okay so now to look at another example question. This time we're being given the refractive index of being of 1.3 and we can either use the equation we derived just now, mu is equal to 1 over sine c, or we can use Snell's law in full. I would prefer to use Snell's law in full because if the exam question uh, or the examiner tries to trick you by giving you the wrong refractive index or something, or just it's always easier to start with Snell's law and then remember the definition of um, critical angle. So here I'm reminding myself I'm going from the refractive index they've given me is from air to glass, not from glass to air, so I'm taking the inverse of it, cross multiplying to simplify, divide both sides by 1.3 to get sine c on its own. Calculating 1 times sine 90 divided by 1.3 is a number on the calculator, and then taking sine to the inverse of that number, and that should get me to uh, the uh, critical angle. So now I'm taking sine inverse of both on both sides. Okay, so I hope you found this useful. Uh, if you look at the next video in the series, I'm going to go through some example calculations on um, 
IGCC type um, questions including things like critical angle and refractive index. Thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe, like and share.